This is my lever router lift and it's a very basic design. You've got a pivot point over here, a lever which gives you mechanical advantage to raise and lower whatever is in the middle very easily. In this case on the inside of this plate is a router carriage and this lever is connected to this pivot block via magnets on the bottom side here and I have a bungee to prevent this bar from crashing down in the event that I bump into it. And all of this allows the router on the inside to be easily adjusted. It's a very simple design and works quite well. Basically this is a full blown router table for my table saw extension wing. And when I designed this I had four things in mind. Number one, I wanted to have a fence that is easily adjustable and this is a design that's been done several times before. Nothing new here but uh, a very proven design. Number two is dust collection. I wanted this dust collection to be fantastic and just like the last version of this router lift and table uh, it, it does the job just fine. I'm very very impressed with the dust collection. Number three I wanted to incorporate a larger router so I could use larger raised panel router bits to make cabinet doors on the router table. And number four, which also plays into number three, I wanted this to be extremely easy to adjust and that's where I get a lot of the questions on this lift. Yeah, but you can't do any type of micro adjusting so it's not that great. Well, actually you can. If you wanna make a door like this with a router table, you have to have precise setup in order to have all of your joints nice and flush. And this particular design, it's one of those things that until you do it, it just doesn't seem like it would work. It's very, very easy to dial in the exact height needed. So let me show you the bits that I'm going to be using to make another door. And then also I want to make a kind of like a, a coping sled, something that I can use at the router table for all of my bits as a setup block, but also to help uh, push the material through more safely on the end grain cuts. This is the set that I picked up on Amazon. I have no affiliation with this tool company. I just picked up these because it is the best balance that I could find as, as far as good reviews and a decent price. Now, when you look up these door making kits, it's always a cope and a stick and then a panel bit. And I find the cope and stick to be a little bit more confusing. Why can't we just call this a tongue and a groove. So all of these bits have three main components on the shaft and that is a cutter, a bearing, and a cutter, a cutter, a bearing, and a cutter, and in the case, on this one over here it's a bearing, cutter, cutter. So if I instantly look at this, instead of trying to identify cope or stick, I can see that I have a bearing in the middle. That means I'm not removing material in the middle. And if I'm not removing material in the middle, that's a tongue. Opposite of that is this one, bearing on top, cutter in the middle. And if the cutter is in the middle, then that means I am removing material in the middle and therefore making a tongue. So I prefer to call this a tongue and a groove and a panel. The panel is essentially a tongue that fits into the groove created by this one as well. Now, because this guy is so huge, I had to create a new insert plate and this one has a three and five eighths of an inch radius on this side for this three and a half inch bit. And I can take that out, switch the insert plate around, and now I'm set up for the appropriate radius on these smaller bits. For the sled, I'm using three quarter inch plywood and I need a square that is about 10 inches square. And you know, this isn't really, I guess it's not really much of a sled. There's no clamps, nothing is riding on top of it. It's more of a backer board that I can use repeatedly for setup. I am making a test door just to dial in the setup and I think I can get all of the door components out of this individual board. This is just a extra piece of hickory that I have. It's rough sawn, so I will have to go through the milling process. But first, I need to see what size door I can get out of this. I normally do my layout in SketchUp, but I figured it'd be fun to do it on paper really quick. So I know my usable space on that board I picked out is five and a half by 63 uh, after it's milled. And let's just say that the door we want to make is, I think a 12 by 16 would work on this board. 
So I know that I have a style on the right side, a style on the left side, a rail on the bottom, and a rail on the top, and a panel in the middle. So let's figure out our sizes here. Our styles are going to be 16, because that's their overall length, by how wide? Uh, let's go with two inches for our widths of our door components, 16 by two. And then the rails are also two inches in width, but how long are they? Well, 12 inches minus two minus two, uh, that is eight. But it's not just eight. We also need to take into consideration that three eighths of an inch that this router bit requires for the tongue and groove joint. So eight plus three eighths plus three eighths is eight and three quarter. So our rails are eight and three quarter by two inches. Now our panel, we already know that our width is the same here at eight and three quarters of an inch because this panel is inside the groove like so, three eighths of an inch all the way around. So our width for the panel, eight and three quarters of an inch. How long do we need it to be? 16 inches is our total length. Minus two is 14. Minus two is 12. Plus three eighths plus three eighths is 12 and three quarter. And I'm actually going to go just a little bit less than that due to expansion and contraction because this is a solid panel. So I'll go eight and five eighths. We'll just remove an eighth of an inch by 12 and five eighths. So can I get all of these parts onto this board? Well, my panel is wider than my board, so that tells me I'm gonna have two pieces to make up this panel, and two pieces that are the same length of 12 and 3 quarter. Let's just go ahead and round up, because these are rough measurements uh, that will be, def uh, they will be refined as we go through the milling process. So let's just say, for the sake of making it easy, 14 inches and 14 inches. Those are the two pieces to make up the panel. And the rest of this will be two inches in width because of our door components. Um, again, just to keep it easy, let's go with uh, 17 inches for our uh, style lengths. And then to keep it easy again, let's go with 10 inches as our rough length for all of our rails. And this tells me that we have 14, 14, that's 28, plus 17, plus 10 is 55. 55 is less than 63, so yes, this size door can be cut out of this board. The milling process is quite quick. I'll start at the miter saw to cross cut to a rough length, then go to the jointer to joint one wide face flat. The planer will make the opposite wide face flat and parallel to the first face and then back to the jointer to get one of the smaller faces square and flat. And then at the table saw, all of the pieces are ripped to their final width and then cross cut to their final length. Keep in mind that for all of our cuts, we need the good side facing down. So the front side of the door facing down and the inside of the door facing up. This is the coping bit, or in this case, the tongue bit, because the bearing is in between two cutter heads and no material will be removed in the middle. This will create a tongue. And that is going to be used on both ends of our short rails. Now, as far as the placement of this bit, we need the bearing to be perfectly in line with the fence. That's easy to adjust and dial in. And as far as the height is concerned, it really depends on the profile of the bits you're using and uh, how much you want exposed. So in my case, I set the height to what I think is an appropriate height based upon the thickness of the material that I'm working with. Now this is a uh, scrap piece uh, or an offcut piece from the material I'm working with and the tongue is somewhat centered. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered, uh, but this allows me to get uh, more of the the profile down here at the bottom, which will be on the front side of the door, uh, more of that profile exposed. As you can see, I don't have much material support up against the fence, and as this piece runs through, I actually completely eliminate the fence altogether. That's extremely dangerous and nearly impossible to do freehand anyway. So that's the reason why I wanted to make this little square. And basically, it just has some elevated blocks all the way around it for me to pinch my material into this sled and hold it 
firmly in place. So now once the sled is referenced off against up against the fence as well as my material, I can pinch everything in place and now I have a firm grip on this piece so that I can safely run it through. I think I'm all set up here to run a test piece which is this and see if I have everything dialed in as far as the bit placement. So this is a very simple concept here and it worked out really well. I was wanting to avoid having to use toggle clamps or hold down clamps if possible and really all I need is a firm grip. Uh, this held together just fine. My only concern was having this piece shift left and right, uh, but I can grip it way more than what's necessary to hold this in place. So this worked out. I'm going to go ahead and run the ends of both of my actual pieces for my rails. I switched out the router bits so that now the sticking bit or what I'm calling the groove bit is installed and I made sure that the fence is in line with the bearing. Now all we have to do is dial in the exact height and as you can see here this piece is going to cut a groove that this tongue will go into. So I'm about one quarter of an inch too tall. I need to get the top of these aligned perfectly and it's really easy to do with this lift even though there are no screws or gears or anything. So basically all I'm doing is pinching the side of the router lift and rotating my hand up and down to dial in the exact height needed. So let me get it about where it needs to be, right? That looks good. And if I push this piece to it, you can see that the top and bottom are perfectly aligned quick and easy. Before running any of my good pieces, I'll use a piece of the same thickness scrap to make a test cut and verify that the height is indeed exactly where it needs to be. I installed the final bit in the router table, which is the panel raising bit, and I once again lined up the bearing in line with the fence. And I set the height so that this furthest edge here will also create a small notch. And that is so that, remember we're cutting with the good side facing down, that is so that the inside face here will have a little bit of a shadow line as the profile starts and then goes into the, into the uh, groove. So, uh, a couple things to note. Number one, this is a huge bit. It's three and a half inches in diameter, so I have my router set at its lowest setting. Generally speaking, the larger diameter the bit is, both on the router and the drill press, the smaller you want to go, uh, the slower you want to go. And I'm also going to feed my material through so that I cut end grain, then long grain, end grain, and long grain. And the reason I want to do it that way is because Typically speaking, on the end of your end grain cuts, you'll get a little bit of tear out. And if we follow up that side or that corner with a long grain cut, then we typically clean that up. So that means I'm never going to end on an end grain cut. And I'm going to take that a step further by using a fresh corner on this little block to push everything through and therefore reduce tear out just a little bit more. It's also worth noting that you don't have to take all of this material off in one pass. If your router can't handle it, you can move your fence forward and make all of your cuts and then move your fence to its final position and then make your cuts once again. And now that all of our parts are cut, we can assemble a quick little door. Now I sized the styles a little bit long because I'll trim those up after, after this is all installed. Let's see, I'll add like a eighth of an inch gap. Install this one and then this final style on this side.
little bit of glue and clamps, and we have a door. Now, of course, once this is all glued together, then you can trim this to its final length. Uh, just makes things lining, or makes lining things up just a little bit easier. So this is my second raised panel door. And overall, the whole process is incredibly easy to do. I was, I was very pleased and impressed with how easy it is to run a set of bits like this and make a door. Um, this is a small one that I made yesterday, just goofing off. And really, it was a little bit too small, which gave me the idea to just throw together a simple square. And this is going to be handy for future setups to get a similar profile to this. If not, then it's just a, it's just an easy backer board to use. So. Uh, I made this video twofold, number one, to get some more experience working with this uh, router bit set, and number two, to show that you can really dial in an exact height very easily with that router lift. I just get a lot of comments and questions about it just doesn't seem easy to get an exact height, when in actuality, when, ac when actually, it is very easy to dial in an exact height. So. If you're interested in more information on the router lift, I'll have some links in the description down below and some videos you can watch or an article you can read. And uh, that's it. So you guys take care and I'll catch you on the next one.